Hey, hey, Barney Community, Jeff here again. Time for some finds in the local store. Now, this is going back to a video I did just a couple weeks ago. Uh, not even that long, I guess. The vinyl finds video, which for some reason actually got more hits than most of my videos. I don't know what the secret was there. Um, but the story about my wife going to the place with all the booze and finding a record thing and then, you know, communicating with me on phone and finding some stuff and bringing me home some surprises. Uh, that place, which some people in the notes said, hey, that sounds a lot like this place in my area called The Painted Tree. And that actually is what this is. I assume the painting trees are starting to spread everywhere. The Painted Tree Boutique, it's like a big store and then you buy, you know, a spot, a, a, a section of it to sell your wares. It tends to be a lot of handcrafted stuff. A lot of specialty stuff, homemade candies, uh, woodworking, pottery, you know, essential oils, uh, everything. And then this guy, one place in the middle of this, who knows how many thousand square foot store, boom, has, you know, maybe 200 records. So I finally got a chance to go back there myself to check it out. And um, yeah, I'm like, okay, they had a lot of the same stuff my wife showed, uh, and but I found a couple things. Whether or not these were there when she was there and she just missed them, which would make sense because they're very obscure, or whether or not they were new. One of them I showed her, she said, I don't recall seeing that. So, he might have had some new stuff. The one uh, Rush album, Exit Stage Left, that she showed me that was questionable. She couldn't tell what was wrong with it. It had a something about the vinyl that looked weird. It looked wet. It looked dusty. Something that wouldn't come off. And anyway, I was going to go check it out, and it was gone. So, um, yeah. And it was, I, I don't know, it's kind of funny. I find it funny. So I'm there and I'm flipping and I'm near the end of my flipping. And this guy walks up beside me and I'm obviously been there before. He knew what he wanted. He walked in, beelined right for the middle section. So he's standing right beside me and he flip, flip, flips. And he moves to the next section, flip, flip, flips. And he grabbed the Gene Simmons solo album and walked out. I'm like, he knew what he wanted. And then I saw him walking around the store later. So, and uh, I'm like, okay, cool. He bought himself a Kiss album. That was, I think the only Kiss album they had there. Anyway, so I'm flipping and some things are catching my eyes. Well, let me go with the first one I found. Um, a band that I see a lot of people show and I see occasionally in the wild. Rarely find them in good condition. It, some other stuff's been reissued recently, but I finally got a Nectar album. Now, this is a later one. This is 1977's Magic as a Child. Um, I've seen this one before. I've seen people out there. I know some of you all have shown this. I know that I wanted to venture into the nectar field. Usually you always see the uh, that 73 album with the big yellow circle. Can't remember the name now. And I know that's recently been reissued. And I see that a lot. But I also see it in a lot of conditions. And I never have pounced on it because of the condition. This was an amazing condition. And it was an amazing price. That's the other thing. Uh, I mean, this album is like, I don't know, near mint. Six bucks. One of the cheaper albums he had in this booth. Some of his stuff, he had a lot of stuff I'd love to buy, but a lot of his stuff was, I think, a little overpriced. Like, I don't know. He had Rush Power Windows for like 20-something bucks. I'm like, mm, maybe it's worth that. It's not worth that to me. But things like that. He had albums that were probably, that were over $30. And I'm like, I don't know. But I stuck with the under 20 range. And he had some good ones. So yeah, so I got my first Nectar album to check out, and again, only $6 there. Now this is one that caught my eye only because of the way they look, and then when I finally got around to remembering where I'd seen these guys before, I picked up the first Roxanne album. And again, this is one of those albums I kind of bought on looks, because the guys have hair, and it, it definitely looks like, you know, 80s, uh, that kind of music, you know, the medley type things. Um... And I knew the name sounded familiar because I remember, uh, and then I looked up and sure enough, th so this album was like 1986. And then I did see in 2018, the band got back here and put a new album out and they've had another one since then. And I remember listening to some of the tracks from that because I didn't know who they were, but they looked cool. And I remember liking it. I was like, these guys are pretty good. So this circuit, anyway, this one's got Jamie Brown on vocals and guitar. And this was, it seemed like this might've been an album that was kind of pulling together people from other bands but Jamie Brown I guess was fairly new in the scene I don't know I didn't see where he did a lot before that but he did later go on he play, he's in the scream people have shown those albums by the scream uh, and then he was in the union you know so I guess he did a lot of work with those same guys back in the day so he's done some stuff 
But then you also got Joe uh, Infante, I guess you pronounce it on bass. And he was in White Flag. He's done some stuff with White Flag. So there's some people in here that have done some other projects. This album itself, it's, uh, I don't know, AOR-ish. It's, um, it's got a little bit of a heaviness, but it seems like it never, it's always kind of mid-paced. It doesn't really, it's, I don't know, I need to give it more spin, but it wasn't like it was high, high energy, but it was really good stuff. It was kind of like the middle range. Some of the stuff I've heard was the middle range of a lot of these really catchy 80s bands. So I haven't listened to it all, though, so I need to go back and, and give it some more spins. But I was really thrilled about this one, and I think this one was only like $10, and it was still sealed. It is a cutout, still sealed. I had to rip it open real quick just to make sure it didn't get warped because the, the edge of it, you could see that it was starting to bend up with the shrink wrap on it. So turns out the record's in pristine condition brand new and then this one this one i guess was probably the biggest score only because it's kind of obscure and i you know i love these albums and um and it was the most expensive it was still under 20 but it was you know and i saw online yeah you could get it you could order it with shipping on discogs for maybe 15 or so so i could have saved a few bucks but supporting local business lamore rocks uh lamore's was a club in brooklyn a metal club in brooklyn in the 80s and they put out an album of a compilation of a lot of the up-and-coming bands coming through the system i love these you know i got that knap uh, pure rock ones which got bands that you never heard of um, now in this case rothschild is on here that i must that's the rothschild new york i believe same band but all these other bands i don't know um math mark math march matt uh, blank, blank, or is that Jet Blank? They scratched it up. Lethal, Ass Lethal Assassin. Look at they're even weird. The Boys, Mean Streak, Halloween. I have seen them. I've seen some stuff by them. Halloween, not Halloween. Uh, Halloween with the creepy monster looking face on the O. Um, I know they've released some stuff since then. So they did go on to do something. And then Attacker, which I don't. The logo doesn't look like it's the same attacker that went on to do a lot of albums, but they might have. They might have. This might have been before they really cleared that up. Anyway, so basically the background behind this is, uh, you know, this album came out, it says, for the past uh, six years, six years, eight years, six years, Lemours has been the up-and-coming place. And so they talked about the kind of bands that came through there in their heyday before they were really big and known. Um, and that they, I don't, you know, people like Metallica and Rat and Twisted Sister and Queen Drake and Slayer and Accept and Wasp and Ingve Malmsteen and many others came through and played that scene in their heyday when they were just starting off and they went on to be huge careers. And so this is kind of like, hey, these bands have been coming through here. They may be a huge career too. I don't see where many of them did. It's on the Mercenary label. Um, but. An album like this, compilation of up-and-coming bands that maybe we never heard of beyond that. I love these albums. I love finding these albums. And so, finding this one, I was, and it was still sealed. Totally still sealed. Ripped it open real quick because I had to definitely get that out and let it breathe. Um, you know, some minor been there. But uh, still sealed album from 1987 of great stuff. I went ahead and grabbed this. I saw this pop up the other day online for some reason. And I, I've had it on my wish list, but, you know, now it's in my hands. So there you go. I just found three. Like I said, I would go back there periodically now. I didn't make it. I don't make it a habit to go to there uh, very often. But, you know, we always find fun stuff. But now we got records. Now we can find some fun records. So anyway, great stuff. <laughs> That's it for this one. Thanks for watching. I'll see you later. Rock on and rock hard.